Ever wondered why your tomato plants have excessive foliage and few fruits? It's a common question, and one we hear from tomato growers across the globe. The answer, quite simply, lies in your gardening techniques. Today we're taking a deep dive into the world of tomato gardening, offering comprehensive guidance on how to cultivate a healthy, fruitful tomato garden. From planting to pruning, watering to fertilizing, we'll cover it all. We'll even address those pesky pests and diseases that can wreak havoc on your crops. But don't worry, we've got the solutions. By planting tomatoes deeply, pruning strategically and consistently, providing the right amount of water, and using tomato-specific fertilizer, you can boost your plant's health and fruit production. And remember, a little bit of knowledge can go a long way in the garden. So, whether you're a seasoned farmer or a weekend gardener, there's always something new to learn. Stay tuned to discover the secrets to a healthy and fruitful tomato garden. Kickstart your tomato journey with the right planting method. And that method, my friends, is planting your tomatoes deeply. Now, you might be wondering, why the emphasis on depth? Well, it's all about the roots. You see, tomato plants are unique in that they can develop roots all along their stems. So, when you bury them deep in the soil, you encourage a more extensive root system. Imagine your plant as a tree, and its roots as the underground branches. The more branches it has, the better it can access water and nutrients from the soil. It's like having multiple straws to drink from instead of just one. Now, that's a hydration party your tomato plant will appreciate, and the benefits of deep planting don't stop at hydration. With a more extensive root system, your plant becomes stronger. It's better equipped to withstand winds, and less likely to topple over under the weight of its fruit. It's like building a house with a strong foundation. It stands tall and sturdy come rain or shine. But there's even more to this story. A healthier plant means healthier fruits. When your plant is well nourished and strong, it can put more energy into producing those juicy red tomatoes we all love. It's a win-win situation. For the plant, for the tomatoes, and for you. So when you're ready to plant your tomatoes, dig a deep hole. As a rule of thumb, aim to bury about two-thirds of the plant. If your seedlings are leggy, don't worry. Just lay them sideways in a trench and gently curve the stem upwards. The buried stem will sprout roots and the top will grow towards the sun. Remember, the goal here is to encourage as many roots as possible. So, don't be shy with the depth. Your tomatoes will thank you for it with a bountiful harvest. In the grand scheme of tomato farming, planting is your first crucial step. It sets the stage for everything that follows. So, take the time to do it right. Because, as they say, a good start is half the battle won in tomato farming. Next, we need to direct the plant's energy to fruit production. Now, you might be wondering how do we do that? The answer is pruning, my friends, a garden technique as old as time itself. Pruning is essentially the process of removing certain parts of a plant, such as branches, buds, or roots. But why would we want to do that? Well, you see, plants have a finite amount of energy. If we let them grow willy-nilly, they'll spend a lot of that energy on producing excessive foliage. Instead, we want them to focus on what really matters. The fruit. That's where pruning comes in. By selectively removing parts of the plant, we can direct its energy towards fruit production. Think of it like being a coach for your tomato plants. You're guiding them, helping them focus on the game, which in this case is producing those juicy, delicious tomatoes we all love. Now let's talk about when and how to prune. Generally, the best time to prune is when the plant has set its first fruits. You'll want to remove any suckers, which are small shoots that grow out from the base of the plant or in the crotches of existing branches. These suckers don't bear fruit and just take away energy from the main plant. Here's a pro tip. Pruning is especially crucial in wet climates. These areas are prone to plant diseases, many of which are caused by fungi that thrive in damp, leafy conditions. By reducing the amount of foliage, you make it harder for these diseases to take hold. So, grab your pruning shears and put on your gardening gloves. It's time to give your tomato plants a little trim. And remember, don't be afraid to prune. Your plants will thank you for it and so will your taste buds when you're biting into that first ripe tomato of the season. Remember, a well-pruned tomato plant is a productive one. And a productive plant 
means more tomatoes for you to enjoy, so let's get pruning and grow lots of tomatoes, not leaves. Watering and mulching are the next steps to ensure your tomatoes thrive. Let's dive into the world of watering. Consistency is key when it comes to hydrating your tomato plants. A steady supply of water helps the plant to draw nutrients from the soil and aids in the process of photosynthesis. But how can you maintain this consistency? Well, drip irrigation is a method that's worth exploring. It provides a slow, steady trickle of water directly to the root zone, reducing the chance of the soil drying out. Plus, it's a water-wise method, minimizing waste and ensuring every drop counts. Now you might be wondering, how often should I water my tomatoes? Well, it depends on your climate and soil type. But as a general rule of thumb, aim to provide one to two inches of water per week, including rainfall. If you're experiencing a dry spell, you might need to up the ante. Moving on to mulching, let's think of it as a security blanket for your tomato plants. Mulch helps to retain moisture in the soil, reducing the need for frequent watering. It also helps to regulate soil temperature, keeping your plants comfortable in both the heat of summer and the chill of autumn. But there's another significant advantage to mulching that often gets overlooked. It can help to prevent soil splashing diseases. When raindrops hit bare soil, they can splash up and spread disease-causing organisms onto the lower leaves of your plants. A layer of mulch acts as a barrier, preventing this from happening. There are many types of mulch you can use, from straw to shredded leaves to compost. Experiment and find what works best in your garden. And there you have it. A well-watered, well-mulched tomato plant is a happy tomato plant. By taking the time to water consistently and apply mulch, you're setting your plants up for success. You're giving them the tools they need to grow strong, produce plenty of delicious fruit, and stand up to the challenges of nature. With proper watering and mulching, your tomato plants can withstand the challenges of nature. Now, let's give your tomato plants the food they need. Just like we need balanced meals for optimal health, tomato plants require a specific blend of nutrients to grow their best. The right fertilizer can work wonders in boosting your plant's growth and fruit production. You might ask, why not use any old fertilizer? Well, tomato plants are a little picky. They thrive on a mix of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium but they also need a good dose of calcium. You see, calcium deficiency in tomatoes can lead to a condition known as blossom end rot. Not a pleasant sight, let me tell you. That's where tomato-specific fertilizers come in. These specially formulated fertilizers contain the perfect blend of nutrients your tomato plants crave. They're like a gourmet meal for your garden, providing everything your plants need to grow strong and healthy. But it's not just about tossing some fertilizer on the ground and calling it a day. You've got to know when and how to apply it for maximum benefit. As a general rule, you'll want to fertilize your tomatoes twice during the growing season. The first application should be when you plant them in the ground. The second, when the first fruits are about the size of a golf ball. When it comes to the nitty-gritty of application, it's pretty straightforward. For granular fertilizers, simply sprinkle it around the base of your plants, making sure not to let it touch the stems or leaves. If you're using a liquid fertilizer, dilute it, according to the instructions on the label, and apply it to the soil around the plants. Remember, more isn't always better. Over-fertilizing can lead to excessive leaf growth at the expense of fruit production, so follow the instructions on the fertilizer package. Your plants will thank you. In the end, fertilizing your tomato plants isn't rocket science. It's about understanding their needs, providing them with the right nutrients, and applying it at the right time. Proper fertilizing can make the difference between a good and a great harvest. So let's get out there and give those tomatoes the feast they've been waiting for. Despite our best efforts, pests and diseases can still strike. So let's dive into the common foes that may besiege your tomato plants and how you can counteract their onslaught. First up, we have aphids. These tiny pests suck sap from plant tissues causing the leaves to curl and stunt growth. If you spot shiny, sticky residue on your leaves, you're likely dealing with an aphid invasion. The best defense against aphids is a strong offense. Encourage beneficial insects such as ladybugs and lacewings into your garden who will happily munch on these pests. Alternatively, a strong spray of water can dislodge them, or you can use a mild insecticidal soap. 
Next, the infamous tomato hornworm. These large green caterpillars have an insatiable appetite for tomato foliage and fruit. Handpicking is an effective control method if you're not squeamish. If the infestation is too large, consider using a natural pesticide like Bacillus thuringiensis, which specifically targets caterpillars without harming beneficial insects. Now let's tackle diseases. Early blight and late blight are fungal diseases that can wreak havoc on your tomato plants. Early blight manifests as dark spots on lower leaves that eventually yellow and fall off. Late blight, on the other hand, appears as water-soaked grayish spots on leaves and fruit. Both can be managed by removing infected leaves, avoiding overhead watering, and applying a copper-based fungicide. Fusarium and verticillium wilts are soil-borne diseases that cause yellowing and wilting of leaves. Unfortunately, there's no cure once a plant is infected. The best prevention is to ensure good soil health, rotate crops, and choose resistant varieties. Lastly, let's touch on the marvel of aspirin spray. It might sound like an old wives' tale, but science backs this up. Aspirin contains salicylic acid, a compound also found in tomatoes that boosts their immune response. Dissolve a couple of uncoated aspirin tablets in water and spray it on your plants every two to three weeks to give them a little immunity boost. But remember, prevention is always better than cure. Keep a close eye on your plants, ensure they're well-fed, watered, and pruned, and act swiftly at the first sign of trouble. Armed with these tips, you can protect your tomato plants from most pests and diseases. The juicy, ripe fruit of your labor will be well worth the effort, and your tomato plants will thank you for your diligence. So, how do we grow lots of tomatoes, and not just leaves? Let's take a moment to recap all the golden nuggets we've uncovered today. First off, planting. We learned that tomatoes aren't just surface dwellers. Plunge those seedlings deep into the soil, folks. This encourages a more extensive root system, providing a firm foundation for a healthier plant and consequently, more fruitful production. It's like building a skyscraper. You need a solid base to reach those dizzying heights. Next up, pruning. Now, this isn't about giving your tomato plants a stylish haircut. It's all about directing the plant's energy towards fruit production rather than excessive foliage. This is particularly crucial in those wet climates where diseases are more prone to strike. Remember, it's not about how lush and leafy your plant looks. It's about the succulent, juicy tomatoes it produces. Let's not forget about watering and mulching. Consistency is key here. Drip irrigation is your best friend, ensuring your tomatoes get the right amount of moisture they need without drowning them. Mulching is like the icing on the cake. It helps retain moisture and prevents soil splashing diseases. It's like giving your plants a cozy blanket to protect them from the harsh realities of the outside world. Then we dove into the world of fertilizing. Not all fertilizers are created equal, my friends. Using a tomato-specific fertilizer is like giving your plants a gourmet meal designed just for them. It's packed with all the nutrients they crave and need to produce those mouth-watering fruits. And finally, we tackled the issue of common pests and diseases. It's like your plants are living in a never-ending game of survival. You've got to be vigilant, always on the lookout for those sneaky pests and diseases that can harm your precious tomatoes. Using an aspirin spray is a simple yet effective way to boost your plant's immunity, helping them withstand these threats. So there you have it, folks. We've journeyed through the world of tomato gardening, from planting to pruning, watering to mulching, fertilizing to disease prevention. Each step is critical, each element playing its role in the grand symphony of growth, all leading to one thing, a bountiful harvest of delicious homegrown tomatoes. With these tips, you're well on your way to a bountiful harvest. Happy gardening.